Hey guys, if you're excited about the future of Toyota, smash the like button. What we have going on is a massive press release dump of information and articles over at the Toyota newsroom in Europe. The snowman is going to be our co-host unless Gigi wants to, to be on camera today. But she's going to be giving me gifts, I guess, early Christmas gifts as we get the snowman pencil ready to jot down some notes here. I and mean, this electric minivan stuff is not important for us in North America, uh, nor is most of this stuff like the 48 volt mild hybrid on the Hilux. I wish we had that. Um, as an option, maybe on the Tacoma, I know we're getting the iForce Max hy uh, full hybrid powertrain, but you know, we also have more information on the Pro Ace electric van. Um, hydrogen in Europe is, is more real and in the near term compared to hydrogen here in the United States, as well as battery electrics taking off in Europe before they take off in the United States. And that's why we're going to be detailing these three major articles or up to four major articles here on these electric vehicles. We got the FT3E, which uh, I, de I debuted for you guys when I was at the Japan Mobility Show. I don't think there'll be a whole lot of new information there, but there is uh, two new concepts that we'll go into full detail today. Gigi, do you want to sit on my lap while I record? All right, let's start with the one that's more likely to come to the United States. They're calling this the sport cost crossover concept with new battery electric model for Europe. Now let's go through the images real quick. This model actually seems quite familiar. Um, this is the BZ sport crossover concept. So um, it is, this is a Chinese exclusive, this vehicle here, and we're going to compare how it is compared to this European model. Um, that we just got a reveal on. So, and well, actually it's the exact same car. I don't see any differences, maybe slightly different wheel finishing, but I thought this was only going to be for China, but it looks like, Hey, they're going to bring it to Europe. Now check out, we have this LIDAR sensor at the top here that doesn't seem to be happening on the maybe the more production ready, uh, BZ sport crossover concept. And notice how they dropped the BZ. Are they going to abandon BZ in Europe and the United States? That's a possibility. I know it hasn't been the most successful naming scheme from them yet, but we shall see if they continue with it. Now, looking at the angles of this, this is absolutely like mind blowing. I don't know what to think of it. I don't think it's ugly, but it definitely is going to catch your attention. So the front of uh, the BZ Sport crossover, and this was a, a flex space concept that is supposedly only for China as well. So let's go through the images uh, that we have on the front of this to see how similar it is. And actually that we have the same trapezoidal uh, headlights. We have this light bar that has these triple lines or quadruple lines at the bottom. So that looks to be all the same from uh, this concept to the one that we saw a while back that was debuted in China. And what's interesting is that this vehicle is extremely similar to a vehicle that was uh, teased at last year's LA Auto Show, um, where we got the new Prius and we got the new BZ compact crossover, not sport crossover concept. So let me pull that up. So down below is the concept that was teased to us uh, and I was able to give you guys a walk around on it uh, at the LA Auto Show 2022. And we have a lot of similarities here, but they've cropped the hammerhead design a little bit further. Do you want down, G? Okay, I think she's getting down. Just a little bit of coffee, G. Let's read about it and I'll tell you my thoughts on it possibly coming to America and why it may or may not happen. So this will be coming into the European market in 2025. So we're about a year to two years away as we enter into 2024. Holy cow. I didn't know about this. Check this out. This is going to be imported into Europe from China. So this will not be coming to the United States, I don't believe, unless they make their own derivative of it here stateside. You know, here's the thing. They have a joint venture with BYD, the number one electric vehicle maker in the world, even surpassing Tesla. Of course, they're number one in China. So they're able to make this vehicle with BYD's, probably their blade technology, their lithium ion phosphate technology. They'll be making it in China and exporting it over to Europe. We will have in Europe, so you guys, if you're watching this in Europe, there will be in Europe uh, six dedicated battery electric models 
in Europe by 2026. And I believe by 2026 in Europe, they'll have around 20% of their entire lineup as battery electric vehicles. So total volume will be about 20% by 2026. Uh, 26. Again, Toyota wants to sell around a million and a half to 1.7 million, somewhere around there, global battery electric vehicles by 2026. Now, interestingly, we haven't been given any interior shots of this sport crossover concept. However, at the Shanghai Motor Show, when they showed this off, this is what uh, the interior looked like. And how much will this be like this when it comes to production? I would say maybe 60-70%. Um, I think it'll be a little bit more heavy with buttons, uh, but this is the same sort of bendy display uh, technology I saw with the BZ Compact crossover, which I call the BZ3X, but we'll see. But that was in LA, and then this is the same uh, general technology as well. So very plain on the inside, looks very spacious, uh, not a lot of buttons, unfortunately, and it looks like pretty much everything is going to just be done through the touchscreen, which... Hey, everyone's doing it. Why is everyone doing it? Because it's cheaper. Um, you just have to have really good software if you're going to pull that off. And these vehicles, in theory, should be running the Arene software, which is going to be um, alien. If you're a current Toyota user, it's not going to be anything like our current software that we have on Toyota vehicles. It's going to be more Tesla-like uh, to compete in the electrified era. All right, so another reason I don't think this will come to the United States is that I think we will have uh, the BZ4X potentially being built uh, in Kentucky. I've heard that, so that's a possibility, even though I'd much rather have this over the BZ4X for a million different reasons. But uh, we were also getting a fully electric RAV4, what my sources are telling me. Um, the new RAV4 will be uh, introduced by the end of 2024. Uh, it's supposed to be fully hybrid. Um, you'll still have the Prime. They'll probably make it better. We'll get battery source for the RAV4 uh, locally, finally, for the plug-in hybrid from the North Carolina plant. And then there'll be a fully electric RAV4 variant, I'm hearing, to be built as well, potentially in Indiana. So take that with a grain of salt because that can all change at any point in time. But that's what I'm expecting anyways on the RAV4. So with a fully electric RAV4, I don't think would uh, allow enough space in the lineup for something like this, as well as having the BZ4X produced stateside. All right, so here's the one I'm actually more excited for, probably due to the fact that we're not going to get it in North America, even though I think it would do well. This is probably built on the B platform that the new Lexus LBX is built off of. It's also kind of like a battery electric variant of the Corolla Cross, no, sorry, Yaris Cross, the Yaris Cross that we don't get stateside either. And I love the styling on it. Let's uh, thumb through the images real quick. They call this the Urban SUV Crossover. If it gets a BZ naming, it's probably going to be the BZ2X. I love how cute it is. It is, it looks like the full fruition of what is the LBX or the Yaris Cross. It's super cute. You kind of have this recycled plastic. I call it epoxy looking, or you can think of it as like a stargazer sort of situation. Looks like you're looking at the night sky, but this is a very, uh, popular plastic right now because it is recycled. I think it, I think I like it better than glossy black around uh, the trimmings of the car. Let me know down below. Do you like this recycled look that gives me kind of like an 80s, 90s retro vibe? Or do you like glossy black plastic around the wheel arches? I prefer this. Okay. So check this out. We have vertical lights here on the side, almost like a Cadillac. And then this sort of vertical design piece as well, these gills were also seen on the BZ Compact crossover concept at the end of 2022. Of course, we have the hammerhead design and it almost looks like air is coming up right behind that Toyota logo, which is illuminated. All right, we have door handles that are sucked into the side here and then kind of like the CHR and the Prius, we have a door handle up here uh, inside the window surround area. Of course, this would be your plug-in. In North America, if this vehicle were to come, it would have the NAX charging standard. So it'd be able to charge at uh, Tesla. But look at the ground clearance on this. That's what makes this thing super cute to me. You have these big wheels, tons of ground clearance. I like the spoiler action going on. Not only do you have the double fin, but you have the 
an additional double fin on the inside of that. We have a light bar that goes across and actually the back of this looks more Volkswagen to me than it does Toyota. What do you think? And we have like a Zorro action going on on the inside of here, almost like a reverse Lexus L. It almost looks like a backwards LZ. Better look at the wheels here. These, I mean, it's concept, but ooh, you know, this is actually, let's see here. These are uh, 20 inch wheels. Would we see 20 inch wheels in something this small? It's a possibility in the electrified era. Um, a closer look up. Oh, look at, yeah, yeah, GG. Oh, a present pen pencil got your finger. Oh, I'm sorry, you want me to kiss it? Mwah. All better. I think the real reason she came in here is to grab another sip of my Starbucks. So uh, I love the light design here, very intricate. We kind of have triple beam LEDs below this, uh, which is kind of like a Lexus feature. And check this out. Typically when you see these bars, um, these little brackets, it means potential like level two or level three autonomous driving. Uh, here are those two concepts side by side. Let me know which one you would rather have in North America. I like how compact this guy is. I like how lifted it is. Um, and I just like the design of it. Now, here's where you can really see where to why Toyota calls this hammerhead, right? Here's the body or the head of the shark. And then it comes out at the end and you have the lights on the end to kind of re represent the eyeball. So unless you see it from above, it's kind of hard to visualize the hammerhead design, but I think it looks awesome. Um, both of these would do well here in the United States. This would be probably a direct competitor to the Volvo EX30, which is tiny, but it is being sold in North America and it's going to do, I think, pretty well for Volvo. So yeah, these concepts, the designs are very handsome, very appealing. Uh, let me know like I said down below, what you think of them. And I'm almost getting DBX vibes from the rear here. What do you guys think about that? And unlike the BZ, well, what, I don't even know what to call it. Unlike the Sport SUV crossover concept, uh, this smaller one, that's like the Yaris Cross, is going to be coming in 2024. So next year, just around the corner, we'll see this launch over in Europe. And like I said, it will not be available in the United States, even though there would be, I think, a great demand for it as an amazing sit electric city car. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, you know, if this was available in America, probably starting around $25,000 to $35,000, depending on how it's optioned. But we also have confirmation that it is front and all wheel drive powertrains. Okay, so what are the four of the six models? Well, we actually have confirmation that the compact SUV is 100% coming. Uh, which is this guy. So this model right here is 100% coming to Europe. And I would expect it therefore to also come to North America. This is the model that, like I said, was at the LA Auto Show a couple of years ago at this point, And it is 100% coming. Uh, when is it coming? We don't know entirely. I would say it's probably going to come in 2020 or 2025. Here's a quick update also on the battery end. I've already detailed this before, but let's just get an update of what's going on here. The affordable BEVs will have a cheaper lithium iron phosphate in a bi bipolar configuration and will get 20% better range and 40% reduced cost versus the BZ4X. We have the performance batteries, which will be seen maybe not so much on the Toyota lineup, but we will see in the Lexus lineup with the LFZC, for example. It's going to offer twice the driving range at a 20% cost reduction compared to the BZ4X. So let's say the BZ4X gets about 250 miles of range. We're going to now be seeing 500 miles of range potentially with a reduced cost for the battery pack and mainly the Lexus lineup initially, and then we could see it in Toyota lineup made for the more expensive Toyotas uh, down the line. But I would say most of your mass market battery electric vehicles from Toyota are going to use LFP batteries uh, with the bipolar structure. The third battery is going to be high performance using bipolar high nickel cathode. So even lower cost and we'll, we're going to get further driving range compared to the 500 mile uh, version that we just talked about that's coming out in 2026. So this is probably going to come out in 2028 or so. They're saying solid state batteries. Now the thing with solid state batteries it just recently came out that Toyota is not going to be able to mass produce them until about 2030. We'll see them enter production in 2027 through 2028. 
with production capacity for several tens of thousands of vehicles. So that's very low volume. And if they're going to be offering solid state batteries, which vehicles are going to have it probably flagship models like the Lexus Sport electrified concept, like some of the high end Lexus uh, flagship models. So don't think of this as going to be game changing on the mass market and until after 2030. So it's going to be a ways, ladies and gentlemen, on solid state batteries, like it always has been. Our solid state batteries will give us a 10 to 80 percent charge in about 10 minutes and that's probably it really doesn't matter on the temperature either with solid state batteries they can charge a really cold and really hot temperatures very fast now since this video is getting really long i'm going to have to make a separate video on the big updates for the lexus and in europe as well so definitely stay tuned for that if you made it this far I appreciate you hit the like button if you haven't and make sure you subscribe for uh, industry auto news updates especially from toyota and lexus you're going to see it here on the channel first thank you guys have a great day take care of yourselves and peace